Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we continue course of advanced mathematics for uh, teenagers. The course is presented on unizor.com and this lecture is part of the theory of probabilities uh, topics and uh, we will talk about normal distribution, uh, normal random variables and especially um, about certain evaluation of the values of normal random variables using uh, standard deviation. It's called sigma, so that's why it's sigma limits. Um, all right, um, well, let's just think about it. Why do we need the theory of probabilities just as a, as a, as a subject? Why do we have to uh, research anything related to this? Well, obviously the purpose is certain level of prediction of the values of um, variables which we cannot um, say exactly that the value will be such and such. So there is always certain random process which we are talking about and random variable um, is something which might take this value or another value and our purpose using the theory of probabilities is to predict uh, that certain values are will occur more often than others, something like this. So this prediction actually is the main goal of the theory of probabilities. Well, of course, this is some kind of a utilitarian approach. Um, any mathematical subject has its own uh, value and purpose without any practical uh, applications. But in this particular case, theory of probabilities actually um, was developed from these practical necessities to predict the values of certain random variables. Now, you also know that in many cases um, random variables behaved like so-called normal, uh, normal random variables um, distributed along certain bell curve where the middle of this bell curve is the expectation, the mean value, um, and the probability is measured, uh, the, prob the probability of the random variable to be from 2 is measured by this area under this bell curve. So this is a non-formal explanation of what normal variable is all about. Of course there is a function which actually describes um, this particular curve um, and that precisely defines the normal distribution. But we are not talking about this, we are talking about intuitive understanding of what the normal uh, random variable is, that's how it is distributed and uh, the area under the entire curve is equal to 1 obviously um, because that's the probability of a normal v random variable to take any value and obviously it's 1 but um, if, we will, if we would like to evaluate uh, what's the probability of our normal variable, normal variable to be in between points A and B, then we just have to calculate the area under the bell curve from this point to this point. All right, so it's very important to be able to evaluate the values of normal uh, random variable, well actually to evaluate, to predict the values with certain probabilities. Um, and that's what this lecture is all about. Now, um, normal variables are basically defined by two parameters. By uh, the middle point, which is called mean or expectation, and the steepness of this curve, because it can be this way or it can be this way. Now, in both cases, the area under the curve would be equal to 1, because that's the total probability. But in the case of this second curve, the values are concentrated more around the mean. Um, in, in the first curve, w w which I drawn, the values were more spread around. So basically, the steepness, how this curve actually arises, um, uh, is characterized by standard deviation, as we know, sigma. So there are two parameters here. Now, um, so we have considered this particular normal variable with um, 
uh, expectation mean value mu and uh, standard deviation sigma. Now we would like to evaluate uh, the probability of this normal variable to, to be within certain uh, boundaries from 2, right? From A to B. Now, it's very conveniently to um, actually um, look at the symmetry of this picture and consider that A has a position mu minus certain distance and B has a position mu plus certain distance. So these are equal to each other. So the whole bell curve is symmetrical and we usually understand that the values close to the mean value will be more often occurring. So that's why um, traditionally we just have the interval around the mean value, the symmetrical interval with the, gain, the, the mean value to be in the middle of it as an evaluation segment. And we are interested in the probability of our random variable to be within this evaluation segment um, between mu minus d and mu plus d. So now it looks like our probability depends on two parameters, mu and d. Well, actually it doesn't depend on mu because if you shift this to the left or to the right, the probability to be within this distance d from the mu would be exactly the same. So our probability of uh, our random variable c to be within interval of mu minus d to mu plus d actually is a function of only two parameters. It does not depend on mu. It depends obviously on d and it depends on the steepness of this curve, sigma, right? So let me simplify it even more. Let's just measure this distance d from the uh, midpoint in terms of um, uh, sigma, in terms of standard deviation. Then it will be basically a function only of one parameter of sigma. Now, what does it mean in terms of seg uh, standard deviation? Well, there are actually, traditionally, there are, there are only three different um, segments considered. When d is equal to uh, standard deviation c, uh, sigma, sorry. When d is equal to 2 sigma, and when d is equal to 3 sigma. So these are traditionally, I mean, obviously we can measure um, d in, in, in any kind of terms, and uh, obviously we can calculate it using certain calculus, uh, but I'm just saying that traditionally it's probably sufficient to characterize the whole distribution with only the uh, value of uh, standard deviation sigma. Now, considering that mu we know, so we know that for a particular random variable, we know what its um, distribution is. We know its average, its uh, expectation value mu, and we, we know its uh, uh, standard deviation sigma. So for this particular variable, we are evaluating what's the probability of this random variable to have the value within the interval uh, mu minus sigma, mu plus sigma, or uh, minus and plus 2 sigma or minus and plus 3 sigma. So these are traditional um, intervals which we are considering. And obviously, if for some reason we know the distribution of our random variable, which means we know mu and xi, and these numbers, these probabilities have already been calculated because it doesn't really depend anymore on any d. We just calculate it for three different concrete cases. Um, then we can evaluate um, the, uh, uh, the value of the random variable, the values uh, uh, which random variable uh, takes. We can evaluate with certain probabilities within these three different intervals. And let me just make you a concrete example.
let's say we already have this thing this is mu this is sigma 2 sigma and 3 sigma so it's mu minus sigma mu minus 2 sigma and mu minus 3 sigma and same thing to the right 1, 2, 3 mu plus sigma mu plus 2 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma so this is area from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma and with this particular uh, bell curve with this particular mu and sigma this value can be calculated and um, and the value actually uh, is, is a known number so let me just give you an example so the probability of our normal random variable to be within the interval from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma equals to 0 0.6827 now what if I would like to say something about the values of the random variable how they fall uh, on, on, on this uh, on this line well they can fall here they can fall here they can fall here well obviously this is area where it's more concentrated but in theory there is a certain non-zero probability that our value will be somewhere there as well right so what I'm saying is that if the whole area underneath of this uh, bell curve is equal to 1 the area underneath this curve from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma is equal to this which means that the probability of our value our value of the random variable to fall within these boundaries to fall within this interval is this well what does it mean it means this, this that statistically if we will perform our experiment which results actually in the normal variable with these distributions mu and sigma if we will um, uh, repeat it again and again and again then relative frequency of um, the value to fall inside of this interval is equal to this so approximately I don't know 68 out of 100 uh, cases we will fall within this um, area and in other cases outside does it mean that we can predict the value with a certainty well a certainty just completely out, out of the question but there is some approximation well we can say that 68 out of 100 approximately uh, experiments will result in the value here is it a good prediction well 68 out of 100 no not really a good prediction I mean it's not really like a significant majority of the cases but let's um, uh, let's consider the interval which is slightly wider than this let's consider mu minus 2 sigma and plus 2 sigma this is the interval so we are adding these areas as well now to be within this interval is much easier right I mean it's wider so whenever uh, the random variable takes value it's definitely more probable that it will be within this wider interval than within this one now how much more probable here is the number nine five forty five Wow, that's a significant growth, you see. So these areas bring a lot. So if it was something like 68% of the cases, now it's more than 95% of the cases when our 
um, random variable will fall within this wider interval. So now that makes our prediction um, significantly more precise. So if we are saying that with the probability of 95% um, or slightly more than 95%, our random variable will take value from this to this, this statement has much more validity. At the same time, we are widening the interval. So what's the, what's the value of our prediction? I mean, if we will predict that our value will be from minus infinity to plus infinity, the probability of this will be 1, but it doesn't really give us any information. So, what I would like to say is that we are giving a less precise evaluation, we are giving a wider interval, but we are having this evaluation with a greater probability. I mean, it's the, whoever is asking us should really choose what, um, what he prefers to have a narrower, more precise evaluation of the values of the random variable with lower probability and wider evaluation with the higher probability. Well, it actually depends on the, on the person and on a concrete task which, which is in front of him. Because if sigma is really very, very low, because if values are already concentrated within this very narrow um, uh, interval around around its mean around mu then probably we can expand the um, uh, the interval to two sigma uh, and say that well the probability is very high that it will be within this interval and the precision of this interval is sufficient for a concrete task which the person performs well and now let me just widen it even more we add these areas so we are doing from minus 3 sigma pl uh, to plus 3 sigma. Mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma. And probability is uh, 9973. Wow, this is almost like 100%, right? Almost like 1. Which means that these little tails are really insignificant. Not that it's not possible to get the value somewhere in this area, it is still possible with a probability of 0 0.0027. However, it's a very low probability, which means statistically, if we will perform our experiment again and again and again, I can say that almost everything will be within this wider interval from minus 3 sigma to plus 3 sigma around the mean value. So our prediction will be less precise, but with more probability. That's always a trade-off. So any practical problem has this kind of a trade-off. If we want to precisely evaluate um, the, the result of the experiment, then uh, the probability of our prediction might not be very high, which means it can or may maybe, it, maybe it will, maybe it will not. I mean, the probability of 0 0.6 whatever it's not really very high but if we are willing to expand the interval within which we expect our random variable to fall then the probability of this obviously is increasing so in many practical cases this probability of two sigma is basically taken as as a standard so to speak so Whenever somebody uh, is saying that, okay, this particular machine, let's say, which uh, is manufacturing this particular part for something, um, and this part has certain dimensions which this machine is supposed to basically um, uh, manufacture it with, well, dimensions might not be exactly like we have set this machine to do. It may be a little bit more, a little bit less, but we can evaluate this more or less. It, it depends on certain um, circumstances. Maybe it depends on um, different uh, voltage in the, in the electrical supply. Maybe it depends on uh, some uh, uh, I know, shaking the, 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 the table somewhere where this particular machine is installed. I mean, there are different random um, uh, factors which really affect the precision and the measurements of the of the part which we are uh, manufacturing 
Um, so the, the people who are um, making the specification for this machine, they can say that in 95% of the cases, the dimensions of this particular uh, part will be from 2. And if this from 2 is not very large, then we can say, OK, I like the specification. The 2 sigma is pretty good enough. And if there are certain um, uh, details which are outside of this range, which means their dimension is really wrong, well, we can throw them out. But considering this probability, I can say that, OK, I will throw out no more than 5% of my, my production as, as just no good, or I will just sell it cheaper or something like this. But the quality ones, which I define as this particular interval, the quality will be here. Now, some other manufacturer can come in and say, you know what, the normal distribution of the dimensions of my detail, uh, of, of my part which I'm manufacturing, um, they also um, adhere to a normal distribution, but with a significantly smaller um, uh, sigma, significantly sm smaller standard deviation. So the graph of my parts would be this. So more concentration will be around mean. The mean is supposed to be the, the, the gold standard this particular part is supposed to be, right? So with a greater sigma, we can actually say that with this one, we can have this interval, which is sufficient for us, because the sigma for the second machine is um, uh, smaller than the sigma for the first machine. So we can get a wider interval. So the second machine, with a probability of 99%, gives me the good uh, result, the, the part which has the good dimension. So something which is supposed to be um, like put aside as, as, a, as a bad quality product would be in only like less than 1%. So if I have to choose among these two machines, I would choose the machine which gives me my good dimensions with the higher probability, right? So that's basically how we are using these formulas um, just to evaluate um, the range uh, and the probability of the random variable to fall within this range. If we like it, then we are buying this particular machine. If we don't, we are looking for something else. All right, so these are so-called sigma limits, one sigma limit, two sigma limit, and three sigma limits. So for normal um, random variables, these are very, very important. So we have to know um, the um, the necessary um, validity of our prediction and uh, use the sigma to basically achieve this um, uh, uh, this particular level of uh, our prediction. If we require that our prediction should be very very uh, precise, which means we have to really uh, have a higher probability of of this prediction to be true, then we have to really choose the three sigma um, interval. And if that interval is good enough for, for our pr practical purposes, then we accept that particular um, manufacturing facilities which, which do whatever we want with this particular uh, uh, precision, with this particular probability. So that's it for today. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com that's accompanying every, lect uh, every, every lecture. Um, uh, and basically that's it. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>